I'd just like to share a solar cell characterization project I've been working on and um, these are the calcs I've been doing and I'd like to go and show the device here in a few seconds. Uh, first a, an overview. I've got uh, an oscilloscope set up to measure the voltage across the PV cell under test and a current sensing resistor again hooked up to the oscilloscope so I will measure the current through to the the device and the voltage across the device and what I've been doing is I wanted to have a resistor a load that would go from open circuit infinite resistance to zero ohms so I could do the full sweep of the solar cells energy production or power production across the load and um, this particular solar cell uh, that I've been working with is uh, 0.56 volts at approximately 5 amps so it's a 2.8 watt solar cell at 1000 watts per square meter 25 degrees Celsius room temperature that's a standard test condition for solar cells so I had uh, no problem characterizing the uh, the open circuit load uh, here's what my VI curve looks like, but when I start to get down to the short circuit current, I found that I couldn't get the low uh, resistance I needed. And so I did some a quick calculation. If I take the, uh, the voltage of my solar cell divided by the, the current it should produce, 5 amps, I need to have a minimum resistance of equal to or less than 0.112 ohms and what I found the best I could do with my um, res my load which I'm actually using a transistor is the best I could achieve was 0.3 ohms so that wasn't enough uh, it wasn't close enough to zero for me to get this I short circuit current point on my VI curve so uh, what I decided to do was redo the test but at a lower illumination and I'll show you how I adjusted the illumination uh, at a hundred watts per meter squared and that would still give me a 0.56 volt solar cell output but the solar cell would be doing one tenth of its total current uh, in that case my minimum resistance could be 1.1 ohms the best I could achieve was 0.3 ohms so I'm uh, well uh, well below that with my 0.3 ohms and I should be able to get most of the entire VI curve and what I'm doing for this variable resistance is using a transistor I'll share the make and model of that transistor in a minute and uh, I'm, I'm attaching it to point AB and just a uh, little wall ward 24 volt AC 60 Hertz supply I'm just going right to the base of the transistor and that will transition it from its open to uh, near closed circuit state and I, sh I will get a nice VI curve and um, I've already saved the output of that test to Excel and here's the data points and I was actually able to measure it uh, this is the VI curve and then I uh, multiplied the V and I to get the power curve and my peak uh, power point if you can see is 0 0.27 watts is what I measured and that is one tenth approximately one tenth of the peak power we would expect which would be 2.8 watts because a 2.8 watt solar cell so you can test the solar cell at a lower illumination and extrapolate to what it would be at the full thousand watts per square meter and now we'll go take a look at the the uh, test rig oh, I just want to make a quick correction this should be 0.1 ohms Zero point one ohms not 
0 0.01 ohm. So it's tenth of an ohm, not uh, one hundredth of an ohm. So just want to correct that before we proceed. All right, here's my test rig. Um, I'm using four hundred watt bulbs, and that will illuminate this stage. Uh, the holes are cut in there because I have a pyranometer that measures the uh, the watts per square meter of the light, and I went around and checked all of these points with this device to make sure I could achieve something close to a thousand watts per square meter of light with this uh, with this setup. And I'm using these uh, incandescent bulbs, and they're the Philips Natural Light 100 watt uh, light bulbs, and. I control the uh, brightness of the light with a variable transformer. Let me just turn this on. This is a really useful tool. And it also gives you uh, BTUs per, per square foot, but we want to switch it over to watts per square meter. And I'm going to turn on this light so you can see them. They start out dim, I'm turning up the power. <clears throat> so we're at 45 watts per square meter, and I'll just take it all the way up to its brightest so we can go well over a thousand watts per square meter. I'm dialing it back, back. There we go, that's pretty close. And I have that at about 80%. The variable transform is at 80% there. So we have a thousand watts per square meter, but to do our VI test, I'll dial it down to 100. There you go. So that's roughly what a uh, the rig would look like with the 100 watts per per square meter light. So this is what the rig uh, looks like uh, producing 100 watts per square meter light. It's going to illuminate our solar cell. All right. So here's my solar cell and the test rig. Um, my two lines for the oscilloscope that will measure the voltage and current. Come back and feed the scope. I'll take a close look at that in a second. Um, here is our 0.1 ohm resistor uh, for sensing the current through the solar cell. And this is the transistor here. It's a power transistor. It's a 2SC5445 power transistor and that will function as our load for the solar cell. Alright, now I'm going to cover this solar cell with the cardboard here before we start our measurements. Just so you see what zero looks like. And so this is an uh, ISTEC GDS 1072AU. So this is a good scope because it has the XY mode, which is what we're looking at here, and we can toggle to the um, main screen and um, the time time domain screen and the XY screen. And you can see the the dot isn't completely centered because the voltage, even though the solar cell is covered, there's a little light getting around the edges and um, illuminating the cell. And I'm just going to press down a little on the cardboard and you can see it move move back to zero a little bit. So that's what we should look like at the start. I want to remove remove the cardboard. And look how much that uh, even relatively dark basement here um, there's enough illumination to push that dot uh, away from the center so we're getting the cells producing voltage now 
Now what I'm going to do is illuminate the cell with 100 watts. You can see the dot moves farther away. The cell is illuminated. This is 100 watts per square meter light. All right, and now this is the just a wall wart 24 volts AC transformer and it's plugged to the base of the transistor and the emitter just with alligator clips and I'm going to plug that in and you'll see the VI curve start to form and there we go And we'll switch back over to the time domain and you can see uh, of course this yellow is the voltage just the trigger a little bit and the blue pulse is the current through the uh, through the solar cell all right so we'll toggle back to the XY mode And we can see that VI curve. And I like to show you what I mean about losing the curve as we go up in illumination. So you can see as we approach, we're now at about 50%. Remember, our standard test condition was at 80%. And so you can see it starts to. become just a linear function because that resistance and the lines and the current sensing resistor and the cell just kind of, uh, well not the cell but the, uh, yeah, the lines leading up to the cell just uh, remove that last bit of the curve that we're interested in, that short circuit current. And with that, we just plug in our USB stick. And save the save the waveform and we can then look at it in Excel. Alright, I just want to share one last thing that is kind of interesting to do with the oscilloscope and the cell tester. And we could do the full um, VI curve of the cell. Uh, we're going to just remove this load transistor. And in place of the load, we're just going to put our AC power transformer. So I'm just going to... hook that guy up. So yeah, we're just going to plug this in and the wall wart is going to uh, put power across the solar cell. And um, sometimes it might be good to use a series resistor with the wall wart, uh, either with the, uh, the transistor or doing this just uh, I noticed that this overheated a little bit so alright so this is our line we're going to plug in the uh, the wall wart here again you get the yellow which is the voltage across the solar cell and the blue which is the current through the solar cell and switch over to XY mode and now you see the, the VI curve of the solar cell. Of course, I is on this axis and voltage is on this axis. Voltage on the X, current on the Y. Um, and you can see a solar cell behaves characteristically just like a diode. And now we're going to turn up the illumination so you can see what happens to the VI curve of the solar cell.
can see how that current shifts as there's more illumination. And then if we get enough illumination, it just becomes linear. It's a line. So that is the VI curve of the solar PV cell. And if we had a higher voltage supply, you could even see the reverse breakdown on the, on the solar cell as well. So, that concludes my solar cell characterization setup.